Hey guys, if you want to learn how to wax and do additive wax ups and subtractive wax ups and things like that uh, using free software, it's kind of a popular software in the dental world. It's called Mesh Mixer. So go to uh, Mesh Mixer and download this free software. It's not really designed for dentists, but dentists have kind of flocked to it being um, being that we like things for free and it's, it's one of the most powerful softwares out there for 3D design and manipulation of files. So download, it's available for Mac and Windows. So pick your favorite one and go ahead and, and sign up and download it. It's a legit uh, company. Autodesk has been around forever. They're not going to steal your stuff. The next thing that you need to do once you download and install Mesh Mixer is go ahead and download some sweet libraries of tooth anatomies. So Christian Brennis, our very own Christian Brennis, that's here now from, uh, we kind of stole him away from Georgia. He has designed his own tooth libraries and they're available uh, for free. If you just Google Blue Sky Christian Brennis tooth library, you're going to find a download link. Go ahead and download um, both of his libraries. He has the aesthetic anterior small design library, and then he also has like the whole entire upper and lower fully uh, fully articulated tooth libraries as well, which really helps when you're waxing um, complete setups and, and things like that for implants and things like that. So you have to once you download those files, you have to unzip them because they come in the zipped file format. And go ahead and unzip those Christian Brennis Tooth Library files. Um, each each individual um, download should have um, multiple folders in them, but you only need to unzip once, and it should be a, um, available now to do something with once they're unzipped. So find the unzipped folders and just remember where they are. Um, there are mine right there. So I have the aesthetic library and I have the Ponic library. And you can see within each folder, there's several subfolders and things like that. But now we need to install these anatomical tooth libraries into the free program Mesh Mixer. So to do that, you're going to go to my documents. This is the same on PC and Mac. You're going to find Mesh Mixer. Then you're going to click on parts and then you're going to click on default and then you see this um, folder group that has like arms legs and random things like that symbols what you then need to do is find your unzipped christian brennis tooth library folder and go ahead and click and drag each subfolder into there so you should have the ponic library and the anterior smile overlay library so those two folders right there and now they're installed. So now what you're going to do is you're going to open up Mesh Mixer. So now I'm actually back on my Mac because my PC um, sucks. So we're going to be on my Mac now. Same thing. Open Mesh Mixer. And the very first thing you're going to do when you open Mesh Mixer is go ahead and import the upper and lower RSD small design STL files to practice with that should be available on Harbor. If not, I don't know, I could email them to you guys maybe, but it takes a little while for those files to import. Now, if you don't have a computer fast enough to do this, just, I don't know, pretend you do and watch the video and high five that you don't have to do it. I mean, this is just for fun, guys. You don't have to do this, but. Um, so you should see the upper and lower models come in and you could change the colors by going to the shader icon right there on the bottom left and just dragging like a gold or or a green or whatever you want to make you happy there. Um, different colors give you different aesthetic effects to see surface texture and things like that. So um, they're more than just shaders. They actually do help. There's even a transparent one would let you see through the teeth. That comes in handy for like implant surgical guides and things like that when you want to see the tubes and things like that. You also notice that you have a little window on the um, right that has your objects. So if you have multiple objects, you could click between objects and you could see, um, you could also click on the object to change to that. If you don't see that, go to your view icon and make sure that your um, object browser is visible. Also, make sure you don't have any other things checked. So when you go to your view icon, you don't want to see the grid Okay, that's kind of lame. You don't want to see the print bed. It kind of defaults where you see all this like stupid stuff that nobody cares about. So go ahead and go to view and just turn all that stuff off. It's worthless and it's distracting and it gets in the way of what you're trying to do, which is sculpt teeth. Um, also go to view and hit orthographic view. I think that's what it was called. Um, what that does is it kind of expands the arch and it lets more teeth be visible at once, um, which really is kind of helpful when you're waxing. To move the model, you right click, or actually, I'm sorry, to move the model, you click the rolly ball down and hold it and then drag the model. 
To zoom in, you just roll the rolly ball in the middle of the mouse and that zooms in and out. To rotate the model, you um, right click and drag. Now, if you're not able to freely rotate like I am here where I could like spin it 360 degrees, that means you have a setting that's like checked that you don't want. So go up to something up here, let's see, preferences right there under Mesh Mixer and, and make sure that little icon there, enable free rotate, it's checked. Okay guys, so you want that to be checked. Um, it's really important. Otherwise, it's really annoying. You can't even spin your model around. I don't know why it defaults to not enabling you to freely rotate. Super bad stuff. So, okay. Now that you could freely rotate your model, you could switch between your models. You could change the color of your models. Um, that's about it. If you want to change the background color, um, if yours is like some cheesy gray or something, hit spacebar. And there's some icons there that will enable you to change your background color. Um, on a little a little window will pop up, and um, you could set the color to anything you want, which is kind of cool. I like white. Okay, so let's get to waxing. So you're going to go to your little like man in the moon there, the little mesh mixer icon, and then you're going to go to your Chris. You can see if you don't see your Christian Brennis libraries, you didn't install it correctly. I'm going to go to my smile library. I'm going to pick. Um, let's see what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick square round. Cause he's got like square round, he's got square, he's got round, and it just you just drag it in and it it shoots out somewhere, um, somewhere not ideal. So then you have to use these arrows. Make sure you don't click the boxes. Okay, so click the actual arrows and drag it, rotate it, and move it like it's 1982 to your to your wax up to your arch. Um, there's nothing fancy about this software. It's kind of archaic, but its simplicity and beauty is something to be. Um, marveled at. Also, if you're moving it and you want to be more fine-tuned with your movements, as you're dragging, um, hit the up arrow on your keyboard and it gives you more tickers, so it, it makes it to where it can move smaller increments. You could expand by clicking a, um, that middle. So there's two ways to, to change shape. You could click the little square icon and drag it in, in any direction um, of the arrow to like grow it mesiodistally or buccalingually. Or you can move them all and not distort them and just make them all larger by clicking the white square and dragging. Um, but what you want to basically do is manipulate this. Spend some time. It's going to be frustrating as heck. You're going to be smashing your computer. But spend some time and get it kind of lined up. This is an additive wax up, which means we're adding thickness to the teeth. But we don't want to make them like so thick they're like, you know, beaver teeth. So it's okay to even have some small holes. Um, it's actually okay. I get rid of them just to demonstrate to you guys that you could adjust each tooth individually. But oftentimes in additive wax ups, we have very, very thin shells or even little holes in places. Um, it's okay. So um, to, to, to highlight one tooth at a time, you double click, you go to the select icon on the top left, right by the little smiley moon guy. You hit the select icon and you literally like double, triple click the tooth and it turns it orange and then you go to, so let me try again. So you double, triple click, come on. Yep, it whole, turns the whole thing orange and then you go to deform, transform, okay? And you could then maneuver each tooth individually. Um, they're they're um, kind of tricky to move around so you have to rotate in all different views so that you're not like doing something crazy like I am here, I'm moving it like way too far lingually where I don't need to be. The arrows are a little wonky because I don't have the model orientated correctly to the build platform, but that's just not something I want to get into with you guys today. So we're going to fight through these um, crazy schizophrenic arrows that are all over the place. Okay, um, so you know, make subtle changes, subtle movements. You could slightly expand and, and contract and move each tooth individually. Um, okay, so now we have a problem because we have these giant megalith to tooth block that are completely interfering with our occlusion. So how do we quickly adjust that? Well, there's two kinds of ways. One is to go to your, your sculpt tools, go to like um, bubble smooth, by far my favorite tool. Make sure your strength is all the way up. There's little slider scale, scales up there. Put that all the way up. Hold control or command, depending on whether you're a PC or Mac, and then melt it away like butter. Bubble smooth is really cool. Um, it does a shrink or a expand, depending on whether you're holding control down or not. 
But a faster way to do it is to actually turn the lower arch magnetic by clicking a tiny little magnet icon in your object's browser there. See the little magnets? Click the magnet icon on the lower jaw, right there, and then go to your sculpt tools and go to the attract. It has a giant magnet on it right there, right, right, come on, there. And now you're going to select your teeth and you're just going to basically click your teeth and it's going to automatically um, conform it to the lower incisal edges. Once again, not super fancy. Um, you'll see when I take off the lowers, it's going to be like literally just notched out. Like you took a hand piece and just hogged it out. Um, whatever. And I could see there that I have an issue where I'm now expanding it out to touch the premolar kind of crazy like. So it does do crazy things. I'm actually going to double click that cuspid number 11 and just transform it um, lingually a little bit so that it's not so far away from the inclusal plane. Okay, so uh, let me just turn off the lower. Let me see. Not that. Hit the eyeball. And you could see now we're just basically... <laughs> cut we, we basically cut incisal edges into the the teeth and so um, what I'm now going to do is go back to my handy dandy bubble smooth power all the way up and hold control or command and just click and melt melt the linguals away melt it melt it melt it thin it all out this is you know we're not expecting perfect occlusion with an additive wax up, um, but it is nice to be able to get it pretty close to reality because you're going to be eventually 3D printing this and making a putty matrix, putty wash matrix of the print, and then transferring that to, to the patient's mouth for them to be able to visualize. In which case, you could then further adjust the occlusion and anterior guidance and then take an intraoral digital impression of that and then reprint um, or save as an STL. But there's also ways that you could kind of tweak individual teeth. So I could, you know, decrease the bulkiness of the cervical of, of that one there by bubble smooth, holding control. <clears throat> by not holding control, I could expand a little bit. There is bubble smooth. <clears throat> Yeah, adding some mesial lobes to those lateral incisors. <coughs> I like prominent lateral incisor mesial lobes for some reason. You could actually go to the move tool. Um, if you go to your sculpt move and make it a little bit big, it becomes like a rubber tooth. You could like stretch parts of the tooth and then go to robust smooth and just hold it down and just smooth any kind of weird manipulations that you made. Spend some time um, playing with bubble smooth. Remember, if you hold control, it shrinks. If you don't hold control, it expands. Robust smooth and the move tool. Those three tools basically do almost everything for me um, when I'm sculpting and adding um, custom anatomy and things like that and changing cervical heights and things like that. Now, I don't have a perfectly symmetrical wax up here, but it is, um, for purposes of this video, I'm going to stop and now show you the next step, which is how do you get this thing ready for 3D printing? Um, so what we need to do is we need to combine the, the, the Brennus teeth to the upper model. So the way you do that is you command click or control click the two things in your object browser, and then a new window pops up that gives you options, and you hit combine. Um, so now they're all combined, but there's still the clown looking um, rainbow of colors. So the way that you get rid of that is you double click um, somewhere on the model and then hit control A or command A for um, Mac. And it's going to highlight all and then you're going to go to modify all the way at the bottom. You're going to go to clear face groups. And so what that's going to do is forget those face groups so it looks like one solid model. Okay, and then so we're like halfway there we need to now trim our nasty borders. This is from an intraoral digital impression, and so oftentimes you're gonna see that those have nasty like folds, creases. So you're gonna to go to your select tool, click outside of the model, and then click the model border, and then hit X. Okay, maybe be very careful, don't cut off your teeth. Um, hit X to delete. 
you want to, this is going to be frustrating for you guys at first, um, real tears probably, but it's not that hard. Select, click outside the model and draw a line and then hit X. Make sure it's not coming through on the other end. Okay, so that's based off of how your model is kind of positioned because it kind of goes through and through. Get rid of like any creases or folds or overhangs or drop offs or anything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and slice that whole distal off. There we go. Okay, so so now we still have an issue because although we got rid of a lot of the nasty border, there's still like tiny little jigs, like hacksaw marks. And you could um, go to smooth border, but I don't find that it works properly. Um, so I go to robust smooth. So I go to sculpt brushes, robust smooth, put it on all the way strong and size is kind of like this medium. And I go around my entire border and I smooth it. So it gets rid of all the little ripples sawtooth marks so that it is nice and beautifully smooth with no creases, folds, bevels, nicks, or any kind of weird marks on it. Because if you don't have a perfectly smooth border, you're not going to be able to do the next steps appropriately and you're going to get errors and then it's going to be a frustration. So it takes like one second. I mean, it takes like, I don't know, 30 seconds in reality. So smooth that up real good. Just lean into it. And then what you're going to do is go to select and double click the blue line. There was like a tiny blue line up there and then go to deform transform. And if you don't see this little arrow system, it means you didn't smooth your border enough. You had some full odors or some folds. It's got to be perfect. But once you get it, go ahead and transform and just expand up a base. It's like making a cow patty on a poured up model. So go ahead and make it ridiculously long. It doesn't matter um, how long it is because we're going to cut it, but it's nice to have a lot to work with. So go ahead and just transform a base. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to select, one, hit accept, and then go to select and double click the base and make sure it all is highlighted orange. And then go to deform smooth. Okay. And then you're going to go to max smooth. Let's see. There should be a little option after it thinks for like a second the little drop down menu there max smoothness and hit accept and it's going to just blob that out like a real cow patty look at that beautiful hit accept and then you're gonna go to edit plane cut um let's see i noticed that i cut a little hole in one of my teeth when i was trimming my model not really ideal. So before I do that, I'm going to go to analysis inspector and you're going to see these little blue balls. I'm going to click the blue balls um, that are pointing towards my teeth to fix them. Don't click any other blue balls or pink balls that you see. You can click a pink ball if it's on a tooth, but not that border one. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to edit plane cut and it's going to drop a line and you see your little compass, you also see that big blue arrow. You want to click the blue arrow to save the half that you want to keep. So I click the down giant, giant blue arrow, and now it's going to save the bottom half, and I'm going to hit accept, and you can see it's going to cut it and make a solid model. And I could just save this right now and print this. I do notice that weird blue line on the facial there. Um, that, I'm going to go ahead and do inspector and try to get rid of that. Okay, so you could just stop right here and just, that's a perfect file to 3D print, but a lot of people are cheap and they want to hollow their model. So go to edit hollow. And it's going to go through this algorithm and just hit accept. And then you're going to go back to edit plain cut. And you're going to now drag that cut line. Once again, hit the down blue arrow so that it saves the down part, the bottom part. Drag that blue arrow up a little bit and then hit accept at that cut line right there. And you can see it's going to hollow out now. It's going to reveal the hollow. That's perfect. That's kind of everything that you would want ready to 3D print. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time um, playing with this software. There's a lot that you could do. You could erase teeth, you could replace teeth. It's just beyond the scope of this to tell you everything that you could do in the software. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos 
I have a couple hundred. Um, Baron Gruder has a ton that are actually more phenomenal than mine. So a lot of smart people doing cool stuff with this. So to save it, you're going to go to File, Export, or Save As, uh, Binary STL. Binary STL is the file you want that any printer could take, any lab could print. By the way, guys, if you want to get into printing, the Frozen Sonic Mini um, is a really cool 4K printer for um, well under a grand. Another like ultra cheap printer is the Anycubic Photon S for like 280 bucks. Um, you could print surgical guides, you could print models, 280 bucks. You get a 3D printer that has a phenomenal resolution that you could actually use for dentistry. Um, I think everybody should have one and tinker with it. All right, there it is. I re-imported it back in to show you guys what it looks like, and that's what that's what the printer would see to print. Okay, let's just uh, keep playing with this stuff.